I want to do two quick videos on research designs. As the slide set here indicated, the plan was originally just for you to peruse and, and study this, these slides at home. But since I've had a fair few of you comment and, and mention that you weren't quite sure about the differences between these kinds of designs and, and what they can do, I've decided to do the two short, quick videos um, where I walk through this slide set here. First one is then focused on um, the Research Design 2001 book chapter. And what I want to do here in this first video is I want to sort of emphasize, outline what is a research design actually. I want to go through the four core prototypical designs that we know. Well, we've already covered experiments, so I won't do that. But the other three I will walk through here. So what are their characteristics, but also importantly, what strengths and weaknesses are associated with each of them? When is what kind of research design appropriate? So just to really make that clear, the learning goal is not just to be able to say, look, I can define what a cross-sectional study is, but also to engage in critical thinking and say, well, due to the particular nature of a cross-sectional design, it's actually not quite appropriate in this situation. It can't support the conclusion that you're trying to, to, to present here. So this is a learning goal for the exam, but what I would also really emphasize more broadly something to think about if you read about a medicine study that is talked about in the news or what food to eat or what business managers should do, whatever kind of challenge we're facing, knowing about research designs can help you assess the evidence presented critical and, and say, is this credible or not? Okay, so that's the aim. Let's get right to it. So research design, just want to distinguish it from specific research methods and techniques that you engage in. So you might really have learned something about the technique of doing a semi-structured interview or how to do a t-test, how to do an over, any kind of statistical test you can think of. <clears throat> Those are specific techniques for how to collect and analyze data. We are thinking about a sort of more broad framework. How have you collected data? What's your overall approach? It's not thinking about the specific building material that you use to build your house, but what are the overall principles? And the aim of this of these research design, this concept is to ensure that whatever evidence you collect can actually help you answer the question that you're going for. Yes. So we want to make sure that if we make a causal argument, for instance, that um, that the evidence supports it. We want to make sure that whoever you're studying are actually relevant to study for whatever answer you're going for. So there are some, this list is also just there to indicate that there are some common typical questions you can ask yourself when you look at a study, but it's not like there is some clear 10 item list you can just tick off and then you've sort of dealt with it. Now you've answered whether something, how credible something is. It's, it's, it's a bit more sort of subtle and, and ambiguous than that. But still, we can say something clear-cut about the different kinds of research designs. So cross-sectional. The analogy you can have in mind is it's a bit like having a snapshot, having a photo. You have data from one single point in time. And then this, since it's cross-sectional, you're comparing across something. So you would have more than one individual, more than one firm, country, case, whatever it is. The aim is to find and explain variation across. You have a lot of information about how tall people are and how much they weigh, and then you analyze this across all these different individuals to find some kind of average um, number that you're going for. This is really the core of quantitative methods course. You would use a survey or rely on, on databases to get and generate the data you're interested in, but again, the key thing is it's a snapshot. You have data from one point in time. So speaking of the violent video game example we talked about in the study cafe, you might be interested in the correlation between kids that play violent video games and whether they engage in aggressive behavior, but you only have data on, for instance, you surveyed them when they were 14, ask them about how much they played these video games and how much they engage in aggressive behavior. 
that's what you got. You don't have information on what did they do when they were 10 or 11, or 12, or 13, etc., etc. You might have asked them about what they did in the past, how much have you played throughout your life, but if you've only collected it at one point in time, you will still say it's a snapshot. So you're going for this average variation. And then a really, really key thing is that you might be able to say something about the average correlation of how much a young kid plays a violent video game and to what degree they engage in aggressive behavior. But it's very difficult to establish causality. How do you know it's the amount of violent video games they play that leads to the aggressive behavior? Could be the other way around. It could be engaged in aggressive behavior that then leads people to play violent video games. It could be a poor upbringing that leads to playing violent video games and it, it, this, it distinguishes or different from that leading them to engage in aggressive behavior it could be genetics there could be all sorts of other factors that explain the correlation which means that it's not necessarily playing violent video games per se that is the causal factor of being aggressive it's a core challenge of any kind of cross-sectional research so really if you have a case, an article, any kind of situation where someone is making a causal claim, like Brenda in the question five from the 2018 exam, making a causal claim based on a cross-sectional design, then it's really important to stop, pinpoint it and say, look, here is an issue. It's difficult to establish causality here. This is just another way of then illustrating um, the point here. Think of it as an Excel sheet. You have some individuals and a bunch and a lot of roles with, with, with each individual. You have whatever education they have. If, if we're thinking of education and salary, for instance, you have information on, on their gender, you have information on their age. You can have a ton of different information, sort of variables that associate to each person. And then in the end, you want to correlate and explain salary. So you can find out through a statistical analysis what how are these things related on average. Um, yes, so that also shows how it's a cross-sectional design. You have sections of data that you want to compare across. Again, at one point in time, you've collected all these things. Another way of illustrating it key thing then when we go to longitudinal designs is that you could sort of imagine starting out like here on the first step down here you sample a bunch of people or a bunch of companies in time one and and if you only do it once then it's a cross-sectional design the moment you then go out and sample them again let's say you want to find out how a company motivates its employees or how a hedge fund invests its money and then you go out and collect data in 2017 and then you go back in 2018 and 19 and you then have data from multiple time points which makes it longitudinal it, it's something that is over time so if you can also look at this example up in the right corner we might be interested in the differences between being 20 and 40 and 60 for instance in terms of being motivated or playing video games or investing the money whatever it is we carried out this research in, in one year at one point in time. So we have different people in each of these three categories. A longitudinal design that is interested in how 20 year old and 40 year old and 60 year old engage in whatever we're interested in here, they would take the same people at 20, wait 20 years until they're 40, wait 20 years until they're 60. We would follow and track the same people. That's what you do in a longitudinal design. You want multiple time points for the same individuals, firms, whatever your unit is. Point is here, and again, we can think of the violent video game example, that the, the point here is that you have a better opportunity to say something causal. You have a better opportunity to say, well, if you engaged in, uh, played a lot of violent video games when you were 13, 14, 15, and then you become aggressive later on, for instance, when you're 16, you have a better chance of saying, well, it was the video games that caused the aggressive behavior. It's not really being aggressive at 16 that caused you to do something else when you were 13. That doesn't, that's not how time works. Could still be a third independent factor, genetics, that explains both 
playing the video games and being aggressive. So we can't completely rule out that there isn't sort of some third factor that is key, but at least we have a better chance of identifying the, the order of, of events. Okay, case study design is then just has a different focus. We're not really interested about variation. We're interested in a particular person. So if we can, uh, if we think of the violent video game example, we would not necessarily be interested in how thousands of people, um, how we can sort of do an average of how much they play video games and how much aggressive behavior they engage in. We would be interested in particular individuals. We would interview them and we would be interested in the particular context they're in. And so it's, it's mainly a, a matter of different kinds of interest. They can still be longitudinal, you can still have, sorry, um, you can still follow young people over a long period of time and how they play computer games and how they're aggressive or not. Do field work, you can do interviews, so you can still collect data from multiple time points and, 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 and look at this difference over time. Um, you can also have originally wrote cross-sectional, I should probably have written comparative. You can also have this comparative interest. You want to compare across different cases. Um, but it's a different kind of perspective. It's usually inductive approach. You look at a bunch of different situations and, 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 and organizations and individuals, and, and you want to understand their particular contexts. You don't engage in a quantitative correlation of finding out some overall averages. It's different kind of focus. You want to not just find out that there's a correlation between playing violent video games and aggressive behavior, but what's going on? Why? What's the thinking that, that is going on here? So again, case study design can also be longitudinal if you capture data from multiple points in time. It can have some comparative elements, um, but it's certainly about some kind of bounded situation, one organization, one person, or multiple organizations, multiple persons. Um, focusing on the depth, this particular context. Again, just emphasizing you can have single and multiple case studies, um, and, and, and depending on your research question, it might be more relevant to focus on one rather than going for several. So, so again, to sort of take a salary and education example, in a cross-sectional design, we would focus on how education on average is correlated to salary. We want to identify sort of the average effect variation across cases. That's really what we're going for. In a case study, it would be what makes a certain person select what kind of education and, and how does engaging with education and, and colleagues there lead to different job searches and getting different kinds of jobs and, and being interested in different kinds of salaries. Don't really care about the average effect. We, want to, we care about the particular person, the particular individual in a particular role, rather than just as many as possible and average effects. Okay, so that was the quick mock through and a multiple choice question you can take here. The answers are on the last slide. In the next video, I will go to the AMJ paper. This was a classical sort of textbook chapter, which gives a broad overview. And the next video is going to go more in depth with particular more advanced challenges that research designs can face.